el día en que tú naciste, nacieron todas las flores. Y en la fila del bautismo... But, who am I? I have no credentials. I am from a very poor family. My tribe is the least of all. People look down on my race. Yet, this honor has been given to me. But who am I? Such was the sentiment of the Virgin of Nazareth. When the angel Gabriel broke the news to her that she was going to become the mother of the savior of the world. That was the cake, but there was icing on the cake. She was also told that her older cousin, Elizabeth, who was already past the age of giving birth to a child, was already six months pregnant. Unbelievable. As soon as she got that part of the news, she jumped up on her feet and in haste, she went from Nazareth to Hebron, a journey of about 81 miles on foot. Remember, there were no cell phones then. If it were the case, she would have immediately picked her cell phone and called her cousin sister. Cousin, do tell. Is the news true that you are pregnant? Could you please send me a selfie? <laughs> and then maybe Elizabeth would have said, the pictures are all over Facebook. Just go to my page. I uploaded them already. Remember to like and to comment. <laughs> but there were no cell phones. All she had were her feet. And so very fast, she went to help run. And when she arrived, Elizabeth immediately could tell, this is no longer that little cousin of mine that I used to know. She could tell, this is now the prospective mother of the savior of the world. And so she said, who am I? Who am I to be given this honor of a visit from the mother of my Lord? She said that filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Blessed Virgin Mary on her part, filled with the Holy Spirit, began the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in the Lord, my Savior. She went on to say, for God has brought down the proud and he has lifted up the humble. And that seems to be God's pattern. He brings down those who are high up there and the very humble he takes up. But who am I? History again was repeated in 1531, 10 years after the conquest of Mexico City. When the same Blessed Virgin Mary, this time not the recipient of the visit, but this time visited Juan Diego, a young Indian. And just like Mary in the past, just like Elizabeth in the past, Juan Diego said, but who am I? Who am I to be given this honor of a visit from the Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God? Remember at this time, the indigenous Indians we are under the colonial rule of the Spanish. And so the Blessed Virgin Mary came, not to the Spanish, but to this poor Indian, and sent him to the bishop in the city to tell him to come over to Tepeyac and to build a temple there from where she would extend her love and her protection to her children. And Juan Diego said, I guess this is a missed call. Rather, I guess you have died the wrong number. It can't be me. Look for someone else. 
I am very poor. I'm from a minority tribe. I'm just a meager peasant. I have nothing to offer. I am insignificant. Look for someone else. Who am I? The story of Juan Diego tells something about God's modus operandi. It tells us something about how God operates, that God is always on the side of the poor. He's always on the side of the oppressed. Follow the story again. When the time came for the Blessed Virgin Mary to visit, when the time came for the apparition, the Blessed Virgin Mary did not come to any of the wealthy Spaniards. She came to the poor Indian. The Blessed Virgin Mary commanded that the temple be built for her, not in the city where the bishop and the Spanish were, but on the hill of the Kayak. Remember that Juan Diego was on his way to the palace of the bishop in the city when this apparition happened. He was going to receive instructions about the faith from the bishop, but now the Blessed Virgin Mary is sending him to the bishop not to receive instructions from the bishop, but to give instructions to the bishop. You see how God turns around the table? Now it is the bishop who needs conversion and not the poor Indian boy. And that is how God operates. He has a special place for the poor in his heart. The rich, I'm sorry for them. And this is not because God hates the rich. It is because when the rich come to God, they come to God full of themselves. And so there is no space for God to enter in. But when the poor come to God, they come to God empty of themselves. And so there is every space in them for God to enter. And when we talk about the poor and the rich here, it is not about how much you have in your bank account. It is about your attitude. It is not about how much possession you have, but it is about how much are you possessed by your possession. But who am I? The story of Juan Diego is not just his story. It is your story. It is my story. Many times we look down on ourselves. Many times we count ourselves as unworthy because the world has told us so. Because the world has said to us, you cannot go to college. People like you don't go to college. People like you don't become directors. People from your village don't become doctors. Go and check. People like you don't become nurses. Go and check. People like you don't become teachers. People like you cannot be priests for God's sake. They cannot be nuns. People from your country can be bishop. People from your race cannot be pope. So just go and sit down there. You can't go beyond this. The world tells us this. And many times when we hear this, we also say to ourselves, and so who am I? But guess what? I don't care who you are. What I care about is who is in you. The God that is in you, that is what matters. The God in you is unstoppable. The God in you has no definitions. The God in you has no boundaries. He can do and he can undo. And when he blesses, no one can curse. The God in you is a God of second chances. I do not care what your past was. If only today you can let him in, he can rewrite your story. Remember, he does not call those who are qualified. He qualifies those that he calls. Remember, you are a book in the hands of God, and God is still writing. So do not let anybody tell you your final story today. God, you are still a work in progress. Wait until you get to the last page. Whatever you imagine, whatever you think, God can do it for you. I do not care. It is not about what you can do. It is about how much you can let God do through you. And remember, with God, all things are possible. El día en que tú naciste, nacieron todas.
todas las flores. Y en la fila 